Hi, this is Winnie Anderson. I'm here with Dr. Patricia Rapici. Trish is a practicing physical therapist, currently practicing in Woodbine, New Jersey, and we've been talking today about physical therapy, how it helps patients, what it helps patients do, and, and exactly how they can access care. So, Trish, there are so many medical specialties today, and healthcare, of course, is always a little on the confusing side. How does someone decide, okay, I need a physical therapist versus I need an orthopedist or I need somebody else? How do I make that first thought that it's a physical therapist I need? Well, physical therapists are educated and clinically trained to evaluate and treat musculoskeletal and neurological disorders. Um, they're also trained and educated to know what their scope of practice is and when, you know, something falls outside of their scope of practice. But the important thing to realize is that you do have a choice and that you do have direct access because at one time you needed a doctor's mm -hmm. note, which you don't, you know, by law any longer need that. So a physical therapist will, you know, be a great first choice for an evaluation and an opinion about your problem. And, you know, they, again, are trained to recognize whether or not, you know, you need to have, you know, MRI or, or X-ray. A lot of times people assume that, you, you know, I hurt my neck, I have to have an X-ray. That's not necessarily true. A really good clinical exam can give you a lot of information that, you know, an MRI, you know, may give you as well, but you don't exactly need it if you do the good clinical exam. Um, if a physical therapist has any question about whether they need more information uh, or there's something that doesn't fit, you know, quite right in the picture, then, of course, they are bound, you know, by law and by ethical you know, standards to refer you to the practitioner that can help out. A good example of this would be somebody that comes in that has back pain and, um, you know, you're doing your exam, and lo and behold, you find out that they also have a foot drop. Uh, they have a significant motor weakness in their foot. They have not been to the doctor. They don't want to go to the doctor. But this is, you know, a significant, you know, finding. You can still treat them. You can treat, you know, the foot drop. You can treat the back. But there needs to be you know, some further very um, specific diagnostic work to find out what's going on because if something is causing this foot drop that can be, you know, addressed, then of course you want to do that. You don't want to just say, oh, you know, physical therapy will, will cover that because not necessarily true. The other good example that I can give you about that is a person that comes to see you, they're They've been relatively active their whole life. They've avoided doctors at all costs because they've been healthy and that's just their mindset. And they wake up one day and they start having, you know, stiffness that lasts for about an hour. Uh, the stiffness and pain is in symmetrical joints, meaning two joints, uh, the same joint on, on each side. They have maybe redness. They're starting to have this very significant and unusual fatigue. They also notice like a nodule on one of their finger joints. So right away, you know, this signals me that these are the symptoms that could be rheumatoid arthritis. Now, can a physical therapist treat rheumatoid arthritis successfully? Absolutely. And should they be in the picture? Absolutely. However, um, in the past couple of decades, the um, advances made for medications for arthritis of this type have been tremendous. There is now a group of uh, drugs called disease-modifying drugs, and these drugs actually, you know, prevent the destruction that rheumatoid arthritis causes. And what a lot of people don't realize is that rheumatoid arthritis not only affects your joints, it affects many other symptoms, mm -hmm. even your heart. So I would, at that point, insist that this patient, you know, get to an internist or get to an arthritis specialist so that they can also receive the medication that is going to definitely improve their 
lifelong outcome. Okay. Well, is there an age range where people do tend to suddenly develop rheumatoid arthritis well, symptoms? Well, it can happen or? at any time. There's okay. juvenile arthritis, mm -hmm. and then there's the onset later in life. Okay. So just something to be aware of right. and tune into. Okay, yeah. great. Good information. This has been Winnie Anderson with Dr. Patricia Rapici. Trish is a physical therapist practicing currently in Woodbine, New Jersey. If you'd like to get more information about how you can restore, maintain your mobility, fight aging, you want to be sure to visit Trish's site, RestoreMobilityNow.com, and access the free video there as well as other free information that she's prepared for you. Thanks.